Hey world, BGB here. How you doing? So I know at the end of the last video I had promised that this month's video would be a doozy. And that video is going to be a doozy, but we had to push it back to next month because of music business reasons. But yeah, it's going to be great. We shop it around to some people in our inner circle. Got some really good feedback. I'm really excited about it. Please check in again next month. In the meantime, though, it's been suggested that maybe I walk you all through some of my old exploits. I don't know if you pieced it together yet, but I'm a composer, producer, musician, general music specialist, let's say. And uh, I've have done some stuff. Uh, I've worked with some plays. I've played in some bands. I've produced stuff for other artists. I've worked in studios. Uh, two of my plays actually have awards. I say my plays. I produce the music for someone else's play, but it's original. It's awards for original music. And yeah, that's my credibility. But what I want to talk about today, though, was an old band I played in called Blythe. And this is our EP, False Sense of Entitlement. You can find this EP on Spotify. Awkward fact, it's attributed to a different Blythe with a very different catalog. And I don't know who to even talk to about that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to bother. Anyway, we're gonna be talking about Blythe. fam it's future brian here so i'm almost done editing the video now and i'm realizing that instead of what i've made here i could have made two shorter more fleshed out videos in this concoction uh i was tempted to split it out to two videos but the second half just doesn't make sense without the context of the first so i'm leaving them together as is but in the description i will be putting links about where each video could have started in case that makes it easier for y'all. In the meantime, uh, I hope you know you like it. I think it's still interesting content, even if I did kind of put together by the seat of my pants. And so I hope you enjoy. In the meantime, please stick around for next month. Like I said, it's gonna be a doozy of a video. It's gonna be great. In the meantime, thank you. I hope you enjoy. Back to Past Brian. We were a short-lived band, as most bands are, but we had a strong start. You know, we played uh, an East Coast tour. We had played with some big names. The biggest name we played with was probably Skating Polly. Uh, there was also Death From Above, 1979. Uh, we didn't play with them per se, but when their documentary was going around to all the venues, we opened for their documentary. And then when they actually played that venue a couple months later, we played across the street at the after show. So no, we haven't played with Death From Above, but we did play across the street from them. They were within an earshot. So, and this is our EP, False Sense of Entitlement. Gonna be running through three of the tracks on there, uh, and just kind of run through my guitar parts, how I made them happen, because there's some fun noises, some fun sounds, uh, and sound design stuff. So we'll walk through the parts, and I'm also gonna have to show you my setup, because that pedal board setup hasn't existed in that iteration for quite some time. So I have to rebuild my pedal board first. To rebuild it, I had to take from this big box of pedals. Oh. All right. All right, so there's a few things we gotta talk about. First, I am not proud of this cabling at all. If I was gonna be playing a show or even just jamming with some friends, I'd spend a lot more time on this build, just making sure the cabling was run right and looks neat and is solid. But proper cabling on a build like this makes an hour job turn into a three or four hour job. And honestly, I'm probably gonna tear this back apart after this video is done. Second, I'm not gonna be talking about every single pedal on this board because that would take forever. And most of these are pretty provincial. Lastly, I don't have all the pedals I did when I was playing with Blythe. And even if I did, I don't entirely remember how I put it together. So what I'm doing instead is talking about how I would make this pedal board now. And honestly, I've learned a lot of stuff since then. So there's about three principles that really went into the making of this pedal board. First is parallel processing. Second, a lot of pitch bending. And third, making the pitch bending sound good. So parallel processing. The brain of this board is a Saturn Works 4 parallel looper. What that means is that instead of everything being changed serially, meaning one pedal goes into another pedal into another pedal, this pedal makes it where we can have four parallel chains of pedals. 
In other words, if I just wanted to have a chain that was just super clean to lay with a lot of verb and another chain that was a really rocking distorted lead, I could have both and they would not affect each other. The distortion wouldn't touch the delay and verb and vice versa. I like to think of this as having three or four guitarists all playing the same thing, but each one with his own unique set of effects and together they really make something new and special. This is also how a lot of favorite guitar tones are made in the studio. Not necessarily by parallel processing and having all these different guitar sounds playing at the same time, but playing the same thing through different sets of chains and blending them together. This opens up a lot of possibilities and this is really what makes this entire board work. I highly suggest checking out Saturn Works' website and their own video, which I'll link in the description, about how this pedal works. Even since Blythe, I've used this pedal in a lot of builds. It can be used in basically any situation. Now next, a lot of pitch bending. I don't know if I need to really explain what pitch bending is. Basically, you take a pedal and you can make it shift the tone of your guitar up, up to an octave or two. Everybody likes a good whammy pedal. Everybody likes that solo from Like a Stone by Audio Slave. But I really try to take it a different place here. Since I had four possible chains to work with, I actually use three pitch bending pedals in this setup. And it sounds crazy, I know, but instead of them being fed into each other, making impossibly high or low tones, they are now working in parallel. And not only are they in parallel, two of them are controlled by the Source Audio Expression controller, which I have placed right next to the whammy pedal, so that I can use my big feet to control all three pedals at once. This opens up the possibility for what I call polyphonic pitch bending. Basically, if you set each one to a different interval, in this example I'll do a fifth, a seventh, and an octave, and they're all in their own separate chain, you can then bend any note into its own chord. In this example would be a seventh chord to omit the third. Now for the Blythe songs, I never used anything besides fifths and octaves, but I think you can really see the sort of possibilities this opens up. I actually got the idea from messing around a lot with the Expand 2 that comes stock with Pro Tools, which is heavily featured in my new EP in Human Catharsis Volume 1. Links in the description, please check it out. All right, last part, making the pitch bending sound good. Anyone who's messed with a lot of pitch bending can tell you that stuff can get super shrill and hard to listen to real fast. And trust me, when you have three pitch bending pedals, it gets that much worse. Basically, the rest of the chain, aside from wanting, you know, distortion because we're a punk rock band, is more about trying to tamper down the higher frequencies as well as fatten up the pitch bends. Because not only do they get shrill, they tend to get a little hollow sounding. So every pedal on here, if it's distorted, Distortion, you know, you've got the tone rolled down or the high end reduced. I also have delays going super fast to help thicken it up or vibrato or some verb here and there. And basically the entire chain after it exits the parallel looper also goes through the Gaia Tone Sonic Enhancer. Think of this pedal as sort of the mastering compressor that is over the entire board. Mainly because when you use this many chains, it's really hard to calibrate and balance without something to really glue everything together. Last part is this all goes into my trainer amp. Basically it's a high wattage tube amp which has a lot of headroom. If your amp doesn't have a lot of headroom, with this much pitch bending, everything tends to brown out and becomes indistinguishable. So really, your amp also matters a lot here. And we're back. Okay, so the first song is called So Pretty. So Pretty is a really simple song. It effectively only has two parts. It goes verse, chorus, verse, chorus, outro. The outro was nice live because we could stretch it however long we wanted to really get a really dramatic effect. Uh, otherwise, the song's pretty straightforward. Uh, the verses, all I'm playing is a E diminished power chord, just kind of arpeggiating it out. <laughs> Easy peasy, right? So then we get to the chorus, which is pretty simple. It's just a pentatonic, you know, kind of chord progression real quick. It goes A, G, E, but then we take that E and slide it down and then start sliding it all the way back up to the A. The idea is that during basically the two bars, it's just sliding nonstop. And it's really holding onto the bass and uh, the other guitarists to really help everyone make sure it's an E. So without the pitch bending, it's just. Yeah. 
Then we add in the pitch bends. Like I said, two of the channels have the pitch bending on them. One set for one octave, the other set for a fifth. And uh, the other one, uh, the third chain doesn't have any pitch bending on it, just to help give it some girth. So it all combines to this. And as you can tell, it's a mite bit unpredictable. Some of it's just that I'm out of practice. Also, though, it kind of is hard to do this while I'm sitting down. Uh, the idea, though, is that in a perfect world, my pitch bend pedal, my foot, is going down slowly and then back up to the top in a very gradual motion. But depending on how we felt when things were going live, I might add in just a bit of a wiggle, but I would try to keep the overall form right. So the next song is Syringes. <laughs> Again, pretty simple song, has three parts, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, build up, bridge, chorus. That build up was kind of our answer to like the sort of EDM build ups you hear before a drop, except we try to make it, you know, rock and roll and punk and noisy as all get out. So the verses for me, super simple, playing an F power chord and alternating in a minor second. So basically hitting a G flat just over the root, not moving the entire hand over, just the one note. And then doing that super fast. I would also be hitting, as Phil's going, hitting a B octave and then a C octave, and then on the next one doing C octave and a B octave. But whenever I hit those, I'd bring in that whammy pedal just to give a nice little stab. So. So fun stuff. Uh, the chorus, sort of similar, where I'm resting on the uh, just an F power chord. I'm not bothering with that minor second thing, but I'm bringing in a more whammy pedal, and it's just much more of a free strum while still being accented with fills going from the B to C and then C down to B. So it sounded like. <laughs> Fun stuff. Then, of course, back to the verse. And the last part, the bridge buildup, super easy. The entire band, we're all just starting at that F and slowly working our way up chromatically until we get to that high F. Yeah, that's the F. And meanwhile, while I'm doing it on top of that, we're all just strumming as fast as we can, as angrily as we can. I'm also coming up slowly on the pitch bend pedals to kind of add in an extra whooshing effect. And then we basically be doing that till we heard the drum roll from the drummer, and then we know to go back to that chorus. So, fun stuff. That was syringes. All right, this last song was called. What was this last song called? All right, the last song is called Murmur. Again, super simple song, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus out. Uh, the first part, the verse, was a very simple, just kind of F sharp minor thing. I just played it innocuously while we were talking one day, and uh, the singer and other guitar was like, that sounds cool, we should make that a song. And I said, cool, let's do that. So basically, I just start with an F sharp sort of power chord look, and go down to the D. And then 
I sort of respond to it then by doing a C sharp E. So sort of a C sharp minor thing again, then back down to the D. And it sounds like this. And, and then while I'm playing that every fourth time, I do a walk up F sharp minor. And then back down. So it sounds like. And that's basically the whole song. The chorus uses the same riff, but then what I do is I'll use the Boss Super Shifter set to a, a momentary setting and have a glide time on it that makes it to where, so momentary will only make it where it only goes up while I'm holding it down, but it has a glide time so it doesn't just go straight to the note, it bends it up to there. So you can make it sound pretty dang cool. <laughs> So you can have a lot of fun with it. So anyway, I end up just hitting that a lot during the, the uh, uh, chorus. And then, uh, next part is uh, the bridge, the solo where we all just to play, get to play something different. It really kind of comes out of nowhere, and that's what we like about it. Uh, I kick on my Holy Grail Verb and my Behringer Ultra Tremolo, and uh, I then use the Super Shifter to regularly make my guitar sound more like a synthesizer. So it's the solo is just two notes, F sharp down to the E, but I start with the Super Shifter on, let go of it. And repeat. And then lastly, we get to the last chorus, which is a little different after the solo because I just leave the uh, uh, Holy Grail reverb and the tremolo on, but then play the chorus as I would normally, but again, it just makes it sound so different. And that's the song. So that's the video. Hope you liked it. We took a composer slash producer, me, an aspiring YouTube personality you've never really seen, talk about a band you definitely never heard, and showed you how he played the music in that band, which you never heard before. Because that's how you make great content, is relatability. So again, the next video though is gonna be super great. We hope you stick around. I don't wanna give too much away, but it's a mashup and we're super proud of it. So in the meantime, stick around. We'll see you next month. Thank you.